we're going to be going over how you can handle GraphQL errors in our form and display them to the user. So for example, if I were to try hitting submit when all these fields are empty, or if I went to and I put like some invalid values, like I'm missing a last name and a password, and I hit submit, uh, when we send this data to the server, it's going to send back an error. We can go to the network tab and we can see a much better error. Um, maybe it's this one. I don't even see. I don't even see where the error went. Let's clear this and just recall this. There we go. Uh, and here we can see the response from the server, and we just get some validation errors. Uh, so what we want to do about this? Uh, well, what we want to do is take this response and display it up here. So to do this, we're going to go to the register component or register page, and we're going to take the response here. Now, normally when I was doing this, or normally I'm doing GraphQL, uh, I'm used to being able to access it from like response. Like usually I'll check if response, and it'll be able to say response.errors, and just get the errors back from here. But uh, we don't actually get access to this, uh, because if you notice, by the console log here, um, it says uncaught promise. So when we actually do the request, you'll notice it's not actually even letting us console log this because it's crashing up here. So we can get around this by just doing a try catch around here. And we're gonna catch the error and then we can do whatever you want with it. So here we can just console log error is equal to error and we can see what we're getting. So I'm gonna get rid of this here. We don't have to worry about that. We could console log a successful response up here if we wanted to. Um, and now let's run this again. So get rid of that. And you notice I'm not refreshing because we're getting hot module reloading when we're doing this. So here's the error. You'll notice this is not too helpful um, either. And usually when I get error messages like this and I wanna know how I can access the fields and see what things I can get to display the error message, is I'll say object.keys on it. And so what that will do is that'll tell me all the different properties I can access. So let's say run this again, and now I can see there's actually four things I can access. And the thing we care about is this GraphQL errors property. So I'm gonna copy this, and we're just gonna log it here. So we're gonna say dot. And we'll paste this, and we'll refresh. Well, we don't have to refresh, I just talked about that. Uh, but uh, we now see the array, and this is where we actually get the error message we care about, um, validation errors, and we can see the different stuff. So that's kind of how I figured out how to get access to this is by doing object.keys on it. And so now we see it's going to be an array. Um, we're going to just go down the first error, uh, and then after that, we're going to go to validation errors. So I'll copy this key. And we're going to say error.graphql errors, grab the first one, and get validation errors. So now validation errors is an array. So we want to loop through all the validation errors. So I'm going to say for each. Uh, validation error. And this is going to be a function. And this is going to be of the type. I'm just going to say it's any. We could add a type definition for it, but I'm fine just casting it to any for now. Uh, and then inside of that, we're going to have a constraints, which is a mapping of the name, it looks like, of the property that we're breaking or the validation we're breaking, and then the message itself. So this is what we actually want to display to the user. So this is what we're going to map over the constraints, and we're going to basically set the pass. We're going to set this message here. And then the property is which field it's associated to. So up here, we're going to say const errors and this is going to be a map and this is what we actually are going to um, pass to formic to actually display the errors so the second prop on on submit is an object with a whole bunch of things that we can do um, that let us interact with formic and the one we care about is the set errors so when we're done with this we're going to say set errors and we're going to pass the errors object and this is then going to allow us to update and show the errors all right, so this is going to be of the type. It's going to be a map where the key is a string and the value is going to be a string as well. So we're going to say validation error dot for each, and this is going to be uh, dot constraints 
and we're going to say object.values. So this is going to be all the messages dot for each message, which is a string. So for each message, we're going to say errors is equal to that message. And then the key is going to be validation error dot, and I believe it was called property. Yeah. And that's going to give us the name. All right. Give that a save. And, uh, Looks like it's not happy with this uh, type. Looks like the type of this is, it's already cast anything. You can just say any here as well. All right, so what we have now is we're gonna loop through the arrays, or sorry, loop through the errors, and we're gonna make a new mapping, which is the field name to the message. And we can log what errors looks like or what we're actually creating. So we'll save this and uh, clear it, run it. Uh, okay, undefined. There we go, let's spell it correctly. So now you can see we have uh, the field name and then the message associated with it. So this is what we're giving Formic. And so now we just wanna display that. So this is actually quite easy with Formic. I'm gonna get rid of these errors now. We just need to head over to our custom component that we made. Uh, and then I mentioned we are going to use this form prop that we have access to here later. We're going to use it now. So I'm going to say const error message is equal to, and we're going to say errors and touched. So if the field has been touched, given the name, and if it has an error, we're gonna set it here. So this is possibly going to be a string or some null thing. So we're gonna say, if there's an error message, we're gonna display, display a div with the message. And I can make the style of this red. That way we know it's an error message. All right, and so since we're using the same uh, input field across all of our fields, uh, when I hit submit here, we're gonna see it's gonna display the error across all of them pretty nicely. So now we have added error handling to our form and we have it auto validating every time we type. So as we type here, it's going to revalidate and then we can run this again. Um, let's do a valid email. There we go. And as we fill this out, it's gonna be uh, more valid or less valid depending on uh, what we do in the form. And you can also have it, you'll notice the validation goes away every time. Uh, we can uh, pass in values to Formic and disable like a uh, validation on blur. We can set the false and validation on change. We can set the false. And so now this will only validate whenever we submit and then it'll just let us type in and we can see the error messages and they won't go away until we try submitting again. So this is now a valid form hit submit and it's good. We can go back to our server and see that we get a good response now. And we do, we can see our email sent. So cool. So that is how you can do error handling uh, with GraphQL errors that are coming from the server. Now also usually I'm using Yup to validate the schema. And I think I like that a little bit better than this. This is a little bit less clean of a um, cleaning up the errors. I think this still works pretty good if you like the class validators, but I think I like Yup a little bit better after trying this out.